Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Deluge's Pro Tip video. Today we'll be talking about whether you'd want to kick or to receive and a lot of things that makes the cyanide game different from the tabletop game. But let's start out with going into the options and looking at the skills that you should have on Ask. Um, we have uh, diving, tackle, dump off, uh, grab, hill mirror pass, multiple block, pass block, piling on, um, sidestep, um, shadowing, stab, stand firm, and wrestle. Do note that I'll be coming back to the fact that you can't put tackle or dodge on um, on ask. And while we're here, please turn down your voices volume. I'll turn off the commentary, and I'm sure you've already heard all their jokes before. Well, welcome to the match. Um, I'm going to assume that you know what um, the rules of the game are and how to play and to move your players before blocking and so on and so forth. So let's talk about if you want to receive or kick the ball. In this, in this case, if I'm the Nurgle team, that you can argue, I'm just going to pick one right now, you can argue that if if I'm receiving the ball, then yes, you get the first four blocks, the three blocks on the line of scrimmage and the blitz. And if you can make that worth it for the entire half, um, with a lot of uh, mighty blow and piling on, then maybe it might be worth receiving. But do have in mind that if I'm going to receive the ball down here and have a lot of players guarding my ball carry and so on, they're not up in the fight and effectively I'm playing with one to three players down while he has all his eleven players to hurt my players and to foul me and so on and so forth and if I'm playing a Bashu team and the whole my whole tactic is to kill his team basically and do a 2-1 grind then you'd want to have as many players available to kill his team as possible If you look at it from a perspective of a passing team, let's say that this maybe weren't a halfling team but would be an elf team, then if they're receiving, they have to be able to score and they'd probably want to score in something like turn 3 or 4. Now with an elf team this should be fairly straightforward and you should always be able to score when you're receiving the ball. The hard part comes when you're when you want to um, when you want to receive with um, or sorry when when you want to kick and when you're defending because obviously stopping him from scoring as an elf team with less strength and so on is going to be much harder if you have um, all your players available to you however all your strip ball and all your side steps and so on then you have a much greater chance of actually be successful in stopping him and getting the ball away from him. So being the first to defend is beneficial to an agility team in that case. Now a team like Goblins for instance would want to receive first as they get um, all the secret weapons and they can then control that the game will run uh, the full duration so they have the secret weapons on the pitch for as long as possible. Now an interesting thing to note about the kick is that it can scatter so far off that even if you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, kick it in the exact center of the field, it can still land so far off that it will bounce off the field and let your opponent uh, give it to a player without picking it up. And I would very much advise against trying to kick it anywhere else than in the center if you do not have the kick skill. So let's talk a little bit about the bugs in the game, in the cyanide game. There is the the bug that when you're lining up, you'll be missing a player and you cannot place him on the field. A lot of players have experienced this. This is, um, in my experience, due to you clicking his players while he's setting up. The game will then, um, for some reason, select one of your players and place him somewhere random outside the field. 
and you will have him selected um, at the start of um, your turn to position your players but if you click someone else he will forever be lost somewhere off the field until you click um, accept to your lineup and he will then be placed somewhere random now there's two ways to avoid this one way is to simply not click have a player selected when your opponent passes the turn to do your setup or simply make sure that every time you start to set up your players you right click on the field first to get that player into the field. Now another quite significant difference between the cyanide game and the tabletop game is the fact that passing does not act the same way as blitzing or fouling does. In the tabletop game you have to declare your pass before uh, you make your move in the same way that if I want to blitz this player I can't move first and then do the blitz afterwards. If I move then I can't blitz anymore. I have to declare the blitz and then I can move around and then I can eventually end up blitzing him if I want to. However, this is not true of the pass. If I if I want to move down onto the ball, pick it up, I can do that and then I can pass if I want to or I cannot depending on whether I've used the reroll. This is important if you want to throw a teammate. If I do like this and declare my pass before I have rolled for in this case um, take root. If I then take root my pass action would have been used and I cannot elect to pass with the other three. However if I move first now I have uh, cleared my uh, take root action and if I pass now then I'm sure that I won't waste my pass action on on simply standing there taking root. In the next videos to come I'll be talking a lot more about throw teammate as there's a lot of things to cover about it. Now you remember that I was talking about um, dodge and tackle not being able to be put on ask. Well if we you can go in here and put dodge on uh, off and if you do the only thing this will result in is that your player will not use dodge when he's trying to dodge out of tackle zones. It has nothing to do with him uh, using dodge on stumbles. If I go over to my other team I have here a block frenzy tackle pestigore. I'm um, going to get a 3 die block on this uh, halfling and hopefully I can show you what I mean. What you can do, because um, tackle is not on ask, what you can do is you can go down here and turn tackle off. This will work. You will not get prompted if you want to use tackle and even if you do force a prompt by having block on ask you cannot turn tackle off during the block. So do this before the block if you want to frenzy him off the field for instance as I've set up to do here. So I get a stumble. Now in theory since I've turned dodge off on this halfling this shouldn't be a dodge for him and I shouldn't use tackle. Well tackle is not used but he does use dodge and I can freely frenzy him off the field now that I have turned tackle off. And again tackle is not used but dodge is. Now another thing that you can do and this also works if you're hypnotic gaze is if you have bonehead like this um, beast of Nurgle does and you can currently see he's not exerting any tackle sounds. If you click him he will roll for his really stupid without moving. Now this of course means that I cannot blitz anymore with him as I should have declared that before. Now of other things worth noting about having bonehead is of course if you blitz someone and your bonehead triggers of course you lose your blitz action. So do always consider is this worth it? Is it worth risking my blitz action on a 1 in 6 roll? And is it even worth doing a block with loner when I could for instance block with block or something else? Now another thing to consider is do you want to take every two die block that you can? 
Do note that this block is a 1 in 9 chance of failing if we ignore my rerolls. Um, and in many cases, if I, if I have a cage looking like this, for instance, the only chance he has of getting tackle zones on my ball carrier now is if I, um, if I fall down on this block. So is it worth doing this block? I have a 1 in 9 chance of falling on my ass. Yes, there is a good chance of hurting him and so on, but if this is my only chance of scoring this turn, do you really want to risk it all by trying to farm SVP, or do you want to win the game? If you've seen my previous videos, especially of me playing, playing Kemri, you will see me leaving my Tomb Guardians while they're able to do two die blocks and just leaving them there, because the only chance my opponent has of getting the ball or stopping me from scoring is if I fail this block. If I don't take the block, then I'm much more safe. Well guys, this has been Deluge, and I'm going to leave you with this one last advice. Remember to have fun. And we all know that the best way to have fun is to win. Now, I'm going to see you in the next episode of my Pro Tips videos. Please do leave in the comments if there's something that you didn't understand, if there's something that you'd like me to cover in the next video, or if there's something that you strongly disagree with. Put it in the comments below, otherwise I don't know what you're thinking.